This is David Blake. Let's talk about the safety and side effects of prenatal sonography. If you research the safety of fetal ultrasound exposure, you will find a paradox. Top Google results claim that sonograms are completely harmless. However, research literature tells a much different story. The World Health Organization published a meta-analysis of ultrasound research that concedes ultrasound produces adverse effects on the brain, immune system, blood, and DNA. Other research adds that it causes changes in hormone levels, enzyme function, and leaves detectable impacts on development and the metabolism of all forms of life. In this light, it is untenable to call ultrasound completely harmless. In fact, given the staggering increase in autism and other developmental disorders, we as a society must acknowledge these risks and renew demands for further safety research. Currently, sonographers only focus on two potential risks from ultrasound in practice, uh, that being tissue damage from heat and acoustic cavitation. Acoustic cavitation is when ultrasound creates tiny gas bubbles inside of you. These bubbles can collapse and burst hotter than the surface of the sun, releasing spears of pressurized gas at upwards of 300 times atmospheric pressure and 5,000 degrees Celsius. On an ultrasound machine's display, this risk is assessed by the mechanical index. Studies suggest keeping the mechanical index under 0.3 to minimize the risk of cavitation, but as you see here, it's very common for that number to be exceeded for the sake of better image resolution during a sonogram. Risk assessment in practice is very limited, and there is no accountability for following best practice guidelines. The output display standard, has it missed its target, indicates that the majority of practicing sonographers are unaware of any risk at all from ultrasound. They employ a standard of guesswork for determining what dose of sound is safe, and many believe that there are no limits to how much ultrasound one should use. The numbers in the study are pretty serious, and I suggest that you read it for yourself. There are parallels in this situation with the use of x-ray for fetal imaging in the 1950s. Thanks to the research of Dr. Alice Stewart, we now know that x-rays are carcinogenic for fetuses. Before her work, every single pregnant woman wanted x-ray baby pictures. Nobody seemed hurt from it, and the pictures were nice. It had become a household name, and society at large just assumed it was perfectly safe to get as many as you wanted. Sound familiar? Ultrasound quickly replaced x-ray as a safer alternative for fetal scanning. Ironically, it didn't go through rigorous safety testing itself, so I'd like to discuss how ultrasound may affect children through its use in other capacities. Predominantly, ultrasound has been shown to have a detectable impact on the growth of numerous organisms. It has been shown to accelerate the growth rate of plant cells, animal cells, bacteria, and other microbes. It has also been shown that ultrasound retards the growth of rapidly developing embryonic tissues in newts. Whether by accelerating or retarding growth, how does this seemingly universal side effect of ultrasound exposure impact human fetal development? Consider that one symptom of autism is too much early brain growth in the prefrontal cortex. Could ultrasound aggravate this symptom and possibly make it worse? Ultrasound has also been shown to alter the testosterone levels of rodents. Elevated prenatal testosterone levels have been linked with autism according to the extreme male brain theory. Could ultrasound exposure cause this effect at critical periods of fetal development? Could this momentary hormonal imbalance have a long-term effect on the health of the child? Could it be analogous to what happens when you expose plant seeds to ultrasound? Multiple studies corroborate that seeds absorb ultrasound through enzymes, such as alpha amylase, and this momentary exposure can leave a permanent impact on the full-grown plant. We know that audible sound can cause tables to vibrate and knock things over, so how does ultrasound affect the brain's very fragile early connections? Many columns are a functional unit of network neurons, and ultrasound may scramble these connections. How does that affect brain development? Ultrasound also damages DNA, even in the presence of free radical scavengers. Some studies demonstrate that this damage can be detected over 10 generations later in cell culture experiments. Could this damage be cumulative between mother and daughter? Could it affect every generation's DNA additively? These are uncomfortable questions with incredible implications, and we must ask them. The goal of this video series is to educate as many people as possible and renew scientific interest in ultrasound safety research. Get involved. I can share this video on social media so that it reaches more people. Your support makes this open source crowdfunded science possible. 
I would like to thank the donors that helped support this video, and it has been an honor to work with all of you.